Bobby, come to Mommy. It's time for lunch, honey. Bobby, come into the house. Bobby! Bobby! Oh, brother. This country bit isn't for me. I wish I were back on the Jungle Street. Bobby! I... Oh, Lord. The shed. Just like in my dream. Bobby! 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 Oh! Oh, no! Bobby, my baby. Oh, my darling, no! No! <laughs> Your time is up. Pretty? Dover Ridge, pretty? Well, grass it's got, and trees, green stuff like that. Sure. So the cemetery. Moving out here was Paul's idea. I want Bobby brought up in the country, Rhoda, like I was, he told me. Not if his pop works in the city, I said. Honestly, I should have had my head examined. Me, Rhoda Powers, buried here in the sticks. Away from theaters and concerts and everything. Oh, not that I got to them very often. Pretty. From the first day I came to live here, Dover Ridge gave me the creeps. Lonely? Nuts. It was driving me psycho. Paul, I'd say, I, I got a feeling. It, this place is just no good for Bobby. Oh, Rhoda, that's ridiculous. You're, you're just projecting your own neurotic urban compulsions. Go fight City Hall. No, Paul, I'm talking about the baby. I told you about this horrible feeling these last couple of days. Feeling? Delusion? Delusion schmalusion. Paul, I can't get it out of my head. Like I see Bobby lying dead near that rickety old shed. And... Oh. oh, Paul, please, take us back to the city anywhere. Brooklyn, even. We don't have to live in Greenwich Village again. Rhoda, stop the hysteria. Hysteria? Two days later, that was exactly where I found Bobby. Poor little doll. The, the rusty points of the big hay rake are driven through his body near the rickety old shed. Oh, that train whistle has been driving me bats all morning. I must be hearing things. There aren't that many trains a month through Dover Ridge. Paul. Paul, it seems to say Paul. Now I understand. It's that feeling like... like just before Bobby died. The train... 36 train tonight. An accident. Oh, of course. He's... Well, he's got it coming to him, Paul does. Even after Bobby left us, he wouldn't move back. Leaving me here all alone by myself all day. It's no wonder Arthur and I got together. Arthur at least listened to me. That is when he wasn't telling me about his painting. Arthur. If it happens, if Paul is... Like I have this feeling, we wouldn't have to sneak around like now. Oh, oh, oh. oh wouldn't that be something? Hey, girl, let's tell him now, You busy? Oh, hi, funny face. I thought you weren't going to call me today. Listen, Arthur, you I just... know I have a deadline on this cover, baby. I was painting all last night It's and... about Paul. Oh, what about Paul? Did he say anything about us? Hey, have you been blabbing? Oh, for heaven's sakes, no, nothing like that. I, I just had a feeling all morning that we won't have to worry about that kind of thing much longer. A feeling? Rhoda, do you know something that I don't? Well, something's going to happen to Paul. I know. You know what? He's going to be in a train accident today. What? Goodbye, Paul. Baby, if this is your idea of a joke...
joke. No, no joke, Arthur. It's, it's just like before Bobby. I, I had the same feeling about Paul all this morning. Oh, good Lord, not Paul. But, uh, look, Rhody, it's just a feeling. Well, with Bobby, it happened. And ever since, I'm like clairvoyant. Well, if you're that certain, Rhoda, you ought to take steps. You know, try to prevent it somehow. Why? Paul didn't lift a finger to save Bobby. And if it happens, well, you and I, we, we'd be free to do whatever we want. Oh, there. Hold your horses. Rhoda, don't count on me. You know I've never promised anything. Arthur. Arthur, you said you loved me. Oh, no. Me for a chump. Look, I gotta get back to work. Goodbye, Arthur. Come on, no hard feelings. And and Rhoda, do me a favor. Call Paul. Keep him away from that train today. Don't forget, Rhoda, you love Paul enough to marry him. Someday you'll thank me. For nothing. Just like I'd been bounced down the stairs. That's how I felt. Arthur's voice kept coming at me. Don't forget, Rhoda, you love Paul enough to marry him. I couldn't remember ever being that cockeyed about Paul. Mostly I remember hating to eat dinner all by myself in some joint. Someday you'll thank me. Oh, that'll be the day. It's not like I wanted Paul to die in a train accident. I just knew he would. Keep him away from that train today. No, why should I? Oh, maybe I ought to try. If anything happened to Paul and I hadn't tried, it would be like I did it myself. Now, that kind of a girl, I'm not. Kenmore Advertising, good morning. Paul Powers, please. Mr. Powers is in conference. Well, this is Mrs. Powers. Doris, it's urgent. Oh, sorry, Mrs. Powers. He can't be disturbed. Would you please give me Mr. Powers? All right, Mrs. Powers, but I'm not responsible. One moment, please. Yes, Powers. What is it, please? Paul, it's me, Rhoda. Look, I, I told that girl... Not... Paul, listen, I am very upset. Rhoda, I can't have you interrupting my work all the time. Paul, you remember when Bobby was... Oh, Rhoda, don't start that again. Oh. I'm late for an appointment. I'll see you tonight. Paul! Paul, please! I called back. They said he'd be out all day. That, that just left one chance. Almost every day, Paul phoned me from the same booth a few minutes before he got on the train, just so I could mix the martinis and toss the salad. Well, that's the kind of guy he is. He runs his life on a schedule like a train. So all I had to do was sit watching the clock all day, waiting for his call. Hello, Mr. Arthur, I got nothing to say to you. Have you gotten hold of Paul? No, I couldn't reach him. And don't bother me and don't come around. Well, Paul would be suspicious if I suddenly disappeared. Look, if you don't get off the phone, Buster, he won't be alive to be suspicious. It's almost train time. Goodbye. Oh, come on. Ring. Ring. Oh, call you stupid idiot. Call. Paul. Paul, is it you? Are you expecting somebody else? No. No, of course not. Your phone was busy a minute ago. Who were you talking to? It was uh, uh, just a wrong number. Was it? Mm. Well, regular time. Have things ready? No. No, Paul, no. No? No, don't hang up. I... Well, if I don't get on now, somebody will take my seat. You know, I hate to sit anywhere else. Uh, remember when I called you this morning? Oh, we'll talk about it tonight at 8.45. No, listen to me, Paul. Don't get on the train. Huh? Stay in New York tonight. Rhoda, I don't want to be in your way or anything. I don't have to come home tonight. I don't have to come home again ever. Paul, it's nothing like that. Well, just why do you want to be alone? Alone? If there's anything I hate, it's, it's being alone. That's why you can't come home tonight. You're not talking sense, Rhoda. Oh, all right, I didn't want to, but I'll tell you. All day long, I've had the same feeling I had before Bobby was killed. Only, only this time, it was going to be you. And it was going to be the 536 train to Dover Ridge. Oh, now, really, Rhoda, how ridiculous can you get... Look, you took a course in psychology at the new school, didn't you? Can't you recognize a death wish when you see it? But, Paul, I don't want to see you die. 
If I did, I wouldn't have tried to call you up. Oh, Paul, please don't be so smug. Please, please let the train go without you. Absolutely not. I'm not running my life by your crazy whims. I'm getting my usual seat and my regular train at my regular time. Well, then go ahead. Just go ahead and do it. Do it. Get on your regular train and take your regular seat. I did everything I could. Now die, do you hear me? Die if you want to. Die. Die. <laughs> I told Paul to go ahead and die if he wanted to. I sizzled down. Nobody, but nobody has a temper like mine. But I knew I had to make one more try to stop him from getting on that train. Like I say, Paul always called me from the same booth. And once I jotted down the number so I could call him back. Oh, busy. Oh, Someone took the booth. Yes? Hi, Rod. It's me again. Oh, Paul. I called the booth and the line was busy. I was dialing you. Look, uh, the train leaves in a minute. I, I called because you sounded so... so funny. I was disturbed. You weren't paying any attention to me. And I know I guess it sounds like a cockamamie story, but worst comes to worst. You stay in New York and, and there's no accident. Well, you say you hate to be alone at night in the country. Well, one night is better than, than forever, right? Well, what gave you the idea that I'd be in a train accident? I don't know, but didn't I tell you about Bobby before he was killed? Yes, Rhoda, you did, and I wish to God I'd listen to you. Well, Paul, will you listen to me now? But, honey, the whole thing is so irrational. Oh, for once in your life, admit. Admit that there are some things you can't figure out with reason and psychology. Brains I don't have, Paul. So maybe I got something else. Intuition, sixth sense, who knows? Just stay off the train, please. You really care? Oh, what do you think I am, Paul? Heartless or something? Look, I tried to call you at the office, and, and then you were out, and I couldn't do anything but wait. You really care that much, Rhoda? Well, what's so strange? Well, I just didn't know. You've been so remote from me recently. Well, maybe you've been Cary Grant to me. What? Oh, there's my train now. I've got to run. No, no. No, Rhoda. Oh, please, please. I can't figure you out, honey. But tonight I'm going to do what you ask. You'll stay? All aboard. The 536 is pulling out now. Oh, oh, Paul. Paul, I'm so happy I could scream. You know how I feel? I'm going to go down to the village and celebrate. Where? To Bonvini's. Where else? Isn't that where I met you? Oh, I wish I were with you. So do I. You know, I'll never forget that first time. <laughs> Remember what you said when Luigi asked if I could sit at your table? You said, I'll eat with anybody. Now, was that nice? <laughs> well, how about you? The way you looked at me, as if I were just a thing. No, Rhoda. I just didn't know any girls like you. The copper bracelet, uh, the dangling earrings, the thongs on your feet, that peasant blouse. So low cut. Mm, you sure noticed that. You always got tangled up in your spaghetti. You know, Rhoda, I've never had so much fun before. You were so lively and so different from anyone I ever knew. Well, you looked as if you could stand for fun. You were so stiff and proper, like you were sitting, standing at attention. <laughs> I didn't even know your name. You know what I could never figure out, darling? Sure I know. Me. I never could figure out why you paid any attention to me. Now, what's so hard about that? You were a man. Only, <laughs> sometimes you looked like a boy in his Sunday school suit. Besides, you treated me like a lady, and, and oh, you seem to have everything. I, I don't mean money, though. You had a lot more of that than the village characters I was going out with. But you seemed to know who you were, and where you were going, and why. And you had a haircut and a press suit, and <laughs> you didn't laugh a lot, but when you did, it was... It wasn't so that people would look at you. And all the things I sweated to have, like like education and poise and distinction, you know? Well, they seemed born with you. I guess that's why I fell for you like a ton of bagels, Paul. And when you hinted we might get married, ooh, I felt like I was Cinderella after the shoe fitting. Rhoda, you never told me that. I didn't think you'd like to hear it. Gee, I thought you liked me because I was 
kooky and cool. Your time is up. Deposit 45 cents, please. Oh, uh, one moment, operator. <sighs> Thank you, sir. Paul. Paul, you're sending a fortune. Worth every penny. You know, I've learned more over the phone here than in eight years of marriage. Well, you could also talk to me sometime when it doesn't cost. You could leave your attaché case in the office some evening. We could have fun like we used to. I'll bet we could. It's been a long time, Rhoda. Oh, tomorrow, Paul. You'll see. We'll start catching up, huh? Tomorrow? Why not tonight? Oh, but you're going to Bonavini's, and, and the next train is in an hour and a half. Oh, what's Luigi's without you, darling? And who says I have to wait for the next train? I'll take a cab. A cab? All the way to Dover Ridge? You're crazy. About you, Rhoda, yes. Oh, darling, darling, tell the taxi to hurry. I'm on my way before that operator can say your time is up again. Your time is up. Deposit for me. Never mind, operator. Bye, darling. In those few minutes, yakking with Paul on the phone, all the rust and cobwebs in our marriage were cleared away. I was looking forward to Paul's coming home. It was a long time since I felt that way about him. Still, that funny feeling I'd had all day still hung around. And it had the same ingredients. Paul, the 536 train, an accident. Only now, in my mind, it got all mixed up with the operator saying, Your time is up. Your time is up. Your time is up. It made no sense now. Because Paul loved me and he trusted me. So he'd given up the train. He was coming by cab. No matter what happened to the train, nothing could harm Paul. Oh, it was six o'clock. I had a lot to do before Paul arrived. And as I started to prepare dinner, I had a funny thought. Arthur had said that someday I'd thank him. I thought he was crazy. Well, it was Arthur who told me to get a hold of Paul and tell him to stay off the 536. So when I was about ready... I wanted to talk to you. Look, kiddo, I told you this morning that I didn't want to play games anymore. Oh, me neither, Arthur. That's over. But I just have a couple of minutes before Paul will be in. Well, the train hasn't passed here. He's not coming by train, Arthur. I got a hold of him and I talked him out of it and... You know what? Paul wanted to get hold of me so badly, he took a cab all the way from New York. Paul spent money on a cab? Oh, no. Anyway, Arthur... You know what you said this morning? That someday I'd thank you? I think you will. Well, this is the day. Rhoda, you're a good kid. Hey, Rhoda, guess what? what? I see Paul's cab. You do? Yeah, on the road. <laughs> it sure looks funny. A New York City cab way out here. Boy, it's gone about 80. What's that? Is that the train? Yeah, it's just at the crossing. Oh. Oh, no. Rhoda. The cab. Paul's cab is racing the train to the crossing. Arthur? No! Arthur! Arthur, what was that? What's happening? Oh, never mind, Arthur. I know. I know. I, I guess I knew all along. <laughs> Paul wanted to be buried in Dover Ridge. He liked it here. And so I stayed. I hate the country and I'm alone. But I guess I'd hate it and be alone anywhere. We came here because Paul wanted Bobby brought up in the country. Well, now they're both gone. But I might as well stay. I know that no matter what I do, even if I live in a crowded city... I'll never escape my loneliness. Theater 5 has presented Your Time Is Up, written by Raphael David Blau and directed by Warren Somerville. In the cast... Natalie Priest, Betty Walker, Paul McGrath, and Norman Rose. Audio engineer, Neil Pulse. Sound technician, Ed Blaney. 
script editor Jack C. Wilson. Original music by Alexander Vlasdotsenko. Orchestra under the direction of Glenn Osser. Executive producer for Theater 5, Edward A. Byron. We invite and would appreciate your comments. Write to Theater 5, New York 23, New York. This is Fred Foy speaking. <laughs>